Sun and Fun 2018. Come back to have another look at the chipper, which now has a little bit of appendage to its name. It says right behind me, Chipper Stoll. I'm Dan Johnson talking to James Weeby, and you have made not just one change, but a few changes, and one of them I can see pretty easily is the wing surface. Looks different to me, James. Yeah. What have you been doing? That's right. What we did was uh, we replaced the uh, Dacron or the fabric covering on our wing with metal. We did this in response to a customer requests and inquiries and uh, we came up with a way to attach the wing using uh, just rivets and actually it's bonded onto the main surface of the wing. But look, no rivets, clean lines. Yeah, it's, it's very clean. It almost doesn't look metal as a result. Yeah, I know. We did, a, we did a good job of that. Yeah, I think so. So, what kind of weight did that add versus what you had? Uh, very little. Uh, the good news, well, the, the net effect of the whole transition was about 15 pounds of additional weight on the plane to add the metal wings to the plane. So the reason is, is because the metal adds considerable strength, we were able to eliminate a spar reinforcement that's no longer required when you build the wing with the metal. But uh, bottom line is, is that uh, we tested the wing, it's incredibly strong, uh, and uh, we, didn't, we did it without a significant weight penalty. Yeah, I guess so. That's, that's impressive. 15 pounds for metal, which means that sitting out here in the broiling Florida sunshine, yeah. put a lot of exposure on a, on a fabric-covered wing or a Dacron wing, yeah. and over time, you're going to have some problems. You're not going to have that problem with no, this. this is a lifetime wing. Any other changes to the airplane beside that? That's a pretty significant one all by yes. itself. But uh, other changes you want to talk about? Yeah, there's some. Uh, there's a couple of other really significant changes. Uh, we added uh, wet wing uh, tanks to the uh, plane at the same time. We figured we're building with metal. Let's consider how to add on less expensive, good fuel capacity. So that, in fact, is a wet wing cell, and you can just see a minimum number oh, of rivets over here, there. where I do see yes, it, just a couple that's of rivets. Correct. That's an identifier that's of the tank being underneath. Yeah, there. That's correct. So we have. And we've introduced that as a builder option for the kit. Uh, it just saves money and allows us to have even more fuel capacity than what we've had before. So builders like that and it increases the plane's range pretty dramatically. And then uh, one other change that's really pretty big is, is that uh, uh, I've been a big fan of the Rotax engines and I still am, uh, but we've gone to the uh, trouble and fun of upgrading the engine with a uh, Edge Performance out of Norway, a big bore kit. So instead of 80 oh, horsepower... Oh, yeah, yeah, I know those guys. Yeah. And, uh, they, so it puts out some extra hoot now. Yeah, well, we're up to 114 horsepower really? on our little plane. And we even saved some weight by doing that. The engine got lighter, not heavier. <laughs> Is that right? Now, that's not a common thing yeah. to have, some yeah. would say. So uh, the uh, plane, ha it, it, it had extraordinary performance before, and now it's just top of its class with the, the big engine in it. Uh, there is one other change what, too. What kind, I don't want to know all the okay. detail about how that adds, but what, what kinds of things do they do to get that much extra power? It's easy. It's just a piston and cylinder upgrade. You unbolt the old uh, cylinders, take them off, bolt on the new ones, torque it down, and you're done. Really? Well, the your done part takes about two days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> but uh, there is, you don't do All any surgery. That's not too long yeah. to get that much extra power. It's it the same stuff you do if you replace the heads. Pull them off, put on new pistons and cylinders, put it back together. Okay. Break it in, and it's like you got a brand new engine. Cool. All right, that's a neat thing. And those fellows have been doing that for. Uh, it seems like I ran into them maybe three or four or five years ago, somewhere in that range, and they weren't brand new then yeah. either. No, they have they have many hundreds of uh, these kits already shipped with an excellent reliability and safety record That's where around I was the world. Going with it. And I would not have used it if I did not have the confidence in the product. Yeah can't see it from here, but we added a stall cuff on the leading edge oh, of the wing. You? Okay. Yeah, simply to improve the uh, aerodynamic Just on performance. Just the outboard? Uh, oh, no, on the entire, the entire uh, leading length edge of the length okay. of the wing. It has a stall cuff to reduce the uh, stall speed Okay. and uh, improve the stall performance just a little bit more. Get it down a couple more miles per hour. Okay. So that's a tried and true technique and uh, we've done it. So is stall, which stands for short takeoff and landing for the three people on earth that don't know that already. <laughs> um, is that a product of the engine change, or both changes, or other changes? All of that has contributed to the development of the Stoll moniker. Okay. Uh, lower stall speeds, less drag on the wing, the metallization reduces the drag versus fabric, the increase in power gets us off the ground in very short takeoff lengths. Um, we just keep nibbling away at the corners to keep reducing both the takeoff and the landing distance.
And what have you got those numbers down to? Does this have the edge package on it? Yes, okay. it does. Uh, and, and how is it? Can you give me some numbers that well, suggest very how that's roughly, changed? I think I was performing takeoff in the neighborhood of 100 feet this morning. Okay. Uh, and, and what it, had it been? If it had been the same day? Oh, and the, 150 to 175. Okay, so pretty, pretty significant yeah. reduction then. Well, well, we increased the power by 40%. And yeah. It does push you back in the seat now when you hit the throttle. Is that right? It's pretty phenomenal. And this went from the 80. You were yes. using the 80 before, which has always been one of my favorite engines. I'm still flying the 912 UL. 80 horsepower base engine, but I have this hybrid now that's got really big cylinders on it. All right, cool. All right, so another thing, uh, when Dave and I were talking about this, I, I said, well, you know, did James say anything about how it's going, how our delivery is going? Are people, <coughs> I know they've been excited about their product, I've seen that, but are you delivering airplanes? We and sure are. There are. People, yeah. are. Is anyone else completed with one yet? Nobody. There's no customer builds completed. I have a couple of guys who are just racing along. It's fun to talk and interact with them. Uh, we've been shipping kits now since uh, last fall, and we're just into the start of April. Okay, yeah. So, so you're, you're, we've already shipped uh, around 17 kits. There's oh. another dozen or so on back order right now, and uh, things continue to accelerate. We've been producing around two to two and a half kits a month, and I'd like to get that up to around a kit a week. So I don't think we'll get there, but it would be fun to be talking about having uh, 50 units in the field by the end of this year. That's a pretty good performance, James. So. You've been you've been designing a lot of different airplanes for a number of years now. We've covered many of them. Yes. But kind of seems like you found your sweet spot with the chipper. Uh, everything's worked out on this one. It's the, been the, my sole airplane focus now for the last uh, you know since the beginning of last year. Customers have responded, and really, it's be, we've developed a community. You know, I know that you're into social media, and we're into social media, and we have people that are out there, and they're communicating. Everything that we've done to the airplane has been in response to ideas and feedback. Uh, the, none of this happens in a vacuum of ideas. The customers and people are just interested say, James, why don't you consider this? Sure. Now? But the other point that I emphasize is that the airplane that we have here, it's the exact same airplane that we were shipping back uh, when we started shipping last September. The metal wings is a covering option. The stall cuff is a leading edge option. I see, okay, so those are, if somebody had finished to the point of having their wing covering done, you could sell them this and, and yes. they could they could say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop with the progress on that yeah. and go to this? That's correct. All right, well, that's, so that's very cool. I haven't done so anything. So no structural change. No. Underneath the skin, it's the same thing as exact the other same thing. Okay. That was one of the beauties of working with honeycomb aluminum. It provided us with very wide, flat bonding surfaces for the skins. Oh, uh, yeah, right. And unlike other kinds of ribs, it made it very easy to just lay aluminum down, lay the adhesive down, and then line the whole thing up and bond it together. Bonding, it's just a word for glue. Yeah, Do sure. the gluing right and Except you end up with a bonder. Better. Yeah, it's like aviation glue. Yeah, that's right. It's bonded. Well, uh, since you mentioned the uh, honeycomb aluminum, I want to observe for you that I think the camera can uh, shift over here and look, but on the tail with the way the sunlight is hitting it right now, you can see the internal structure fairly well through this to show some of that honeycombed yeah. aluminum, right? Yes, that's exactly what you're looking at. So, and the wing uses some of those same things, so when yes. you're metallizing, if you were to metallize the surface, not that you would want to or need to, but if you were, that's all those big surfaces yes. you just talked about. Yes. Okay, great. All right, well, good stuff, James. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated to see how far you've come along with this. Now we're looking at chipper stall. Uh, I've asked you quite a few questions about changes, and previous videos have identified a lot of things. If people said, all right, that's that. You finally pushed me over the limit. Something you said today pushed them over the limit. They want to do something, or they have more questions. Where do we send them on the web? Well, let's you? always go to chipper.aero. Chipper.aero. Pretty easy. And uh, info at belightaircraft.com also works. And you can always find our phone number there and call as well. Facebook, search Be Light Aircraft. We have a great chipper builder community group running as well. Excellent. And through the website, we can also find out about your whole line of aviation instruments as well. Yes, that's Excellent correct. stuff. All right, more stuff about the chipper and Be Light instruments and all kinds of affordable aviation available on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining James Weeby and myself here at Sun and Fun 2018.